Hello and welcome to Awkward Family Conversations, an intergenerational discussion of topics of interest mainly to millennials and Gen Z Zoomers. As always, I'm joined uh, by my younger daughter, Addie. Uh, when Addie was younger, and she is even now, uh, Santa Cruz was her favorite place in the world. I don't know if it still is. Ad, is Santa Cruz still your favorite place in the world? It's definitely up there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great place to visit. Uh, we, of course, live in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, we'd go down there, and we, there was the beach, uh, the boardwalk with all the rides. They had the municipal pier, uh, and they had downtown, which was kind of fun. So uh, logos. lots of places, lots of things to do. And of course they had Mary Ann's ice cream, which was always a stop on the way out of town. It's good stuff. Not anymore for you, but, uh, well, they you could do it. Already. Yeah. <laughs> you could do the, uh, your mother's, uh, non-sugar, uh, I, non we went. I feel like we went sometime while I've been vegan. And I got sorbet. I got like raspberry sorbet or something, and it was really tasty. Uh, it would be because they're all made there. So yeah, anyway, it was anyway. it was not the sugar free coffee that was just cold black coffee. <laughs> that your that your mother got once that was just horrible. So <laughs> so bad. <laughs> all right. Well, good morning. Hello, Ed. I guess it's not morning. It's afternoon. It's and where you it's are? Four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hi, Dad. Um, I'm here with my father, Rhett, who just talked about gross ice cream. Um, and a fun fact about Rhett is that when he was younger, I think, I think I want to say you were in middle school, but you can correct me when I get through this. Um, he decided that after finding a dead mouse body at his bus stop, he should carry it around in his pocket all day so he can bury it at the bus stop when he gets back that afternoon. And he did. Yeah, I was, uh, that was middle school for me. That was ninth grade in Denver. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought it was like seventh grade. I thought you were like 12. No, it was ninth. ninth <laughs> it, was, it was a field mouse. Uh, you know, there was a lot of, you know, it was a subdivision that was being uh, going under construction and opposite the bus stop was a big empty field. And at my feet, when I'm standing there waiting for the bus, I looked down and there was a dead mouse. So yeah, put it in my shirt pocket, carried it around all day. <laughs> Well, no one is surprised that I want to be a veterinarian. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm not really a huge animal guy either. I'm not sure why that was, but it just seemed like it was the right thing to do. And I actually had the opportunity in fourth period in math when my teacher heard that I had a mouse in my pocket and asked me if I wanted to go out and bury it in the field. And I said, no, I was going to wait till I got home. So, <sighs> Childhood rut stories provide endless <laughs> trivia. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. All right. Well, our topic today is how do I have a healthy relationship with my partner, building off of our last week healthy relationship with yourself? Yes. Well, uh, so we're going to lean heavily, I think, on internet or two minutes of internet research this week, at least for me. I have to say, not super experienced with relationships. Um, Same. Uh, the romantic variety I've got. Well, I had one girlfriend before I met your mother and uh, didn't date hardly at all. So uh, didn't you, I mean, oh shoot, my ret trivia this week should have been when you pretended to faint to get out of kissing someone. Uh, pretended to pass out drunk would be more <laughs> accurate, but uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of honesty in relationships. And that's a very good example of, uh, what not to do what not to do yeah doing a very bad uh, yeah it was not that was not an appropriate or uh, respectful way to behave so um, a lot of that. i did a lot of taking the easy way out uh, when i was uh, uh, in uh, previous romantic relationships uh, we talked last week about being conflict averse and uh, it carries over into relationships and a lot of really unhealthy behaviors uh, things that aren't respectful and uh, aren't honest, which are, are going to talk about kind of important in a, uh, in a partnership. So we had a conversation like this a few years ago, Ed, oh. what you remember about that. Oh. Uh, for both of my daughters, I took them out for breakfast on some Saturday, I think, Saturday or Sunday, weekend day, when they turned 16, they weren't allowed to date until they were 16. That's true. 
not sure if they either one did or not behind our back. I but. waited for like a week after my 16th birthday was when I went on my first date. Okay. No, so. it would have been like three weeks because the week after we were in Canada, the, like the right. week after we got back, I went on a date. Right. So 16, uh, we had a conversation about, uh, well, we labeled it the sex talk just for fun, but it was really more about relationships. Or true. Remember that conversation? Right? Um, I do. And I remember that you opened it after we waited. We were in like an ungodly line for bagels that day too. And then we got bagels and coffee and we finally sat down and you were like, so when your mom and I have sex, which I don't remember anything else. You let off too strong, dad. <laughs> uh, that was inspiring. I have to say that was pretty inspired. I, uh, yeah, the whole idea was to make that so traumatic for you um, that anything that followed would have been easier conversation, but apparently it was so traumatic you don't remember anything that we talked about. But That's a joke. I remember a decent amount of it. And I remember that it was like a third relationships, a third STDs and a third I don't remember. <laughs> well, I don't think there was, any, I don't remember any of the STDs part other than- No, it was like, it was like pregnancy, which also honestly, wow. STD. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> A responsibility around being pregnant <laughs> well it's yeah i mean so we did talk a little bit about sex because sex is part of uh, romantic relationships and uh, you know the main thing that we talked about or the main thing i was trying to communicate during that time uh, and i'll try it again today and see if it, you remember is that um, you know it's really important uh we'll talk about you know communication is is essential uh, in the relationships and we'll come back to that uh, time and again today, but uh, you know, you need to know what kind of relationship you want with the person that you're having a relationship with. Um, and it could be a platonic relationship, it could be one of those friends with benefits relationships where it's just about hanging out and going for sex if you want the booty call, as it were. Ew, please never say that again. Ah, it's gonna be a great, this is gonna be a great session. Here. I need to go get my bottle of wine out of the fridge and just like have it handy. Ah. We're going to put the awkward and awkward family conversations for real today. Yeah. Uh, there's the casual relationship where, you know, you kind of see each other, but you're not super, uh, you know, you, you have other things that you're going to uh, commit your time to. And then there's, you know, kind of a committed relationship. There's, uh, you know, this is obviously a spectrum and there's not just four categories, but basically the important thing is to know what kind of relationship you want and be very clear with your partner that that's the relationship you're about, um, that that's, that's what it is. Because, um, and this was the point of our previous conversation when you were 16, is that uh, so many feelings, so much hurt and injury happens because people make different assumptions or have different expectations and, and it's not been, it, you, you haven't been clear with each other on, on what it is that each of you want out of a relationship. And so, you know, if you think you're having relationship and somebody else is thinking, no, no, this is just platonic. I mean, that's the classic, um, the classic one. But you know, if you think you're sort of friends with benefits, and somebody else, your partner is thinking, no, this is really more about you know doing things together and and, and making time for each other. Well, that you know that, that's going to lead to a lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of pain, uh, emotional pain. Um, that can be avoided just by talking about being upfront. And, you know, we've talked in the past about, you know, the importance of owning your decisions of, of, of thinking through and, and acting with intent and with purpose and, and with purpose. And that's, uh, you know, we're going to hear a lot of the same things here because those are generally healthy behaviors. Uh, when you are being intentional, when you're acting with purpose, when you're communicating about that, and when you're owning the re your decisions, then you're and you're behaving in a in a uh, in, in in a way that shows integrity, um, and and you're much likely to lessen confusion, which causes anxiety and 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 upset and 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 emotional pain. So, so that was the whole point of that conversation. Uh, well, it wasn't the whole point. That was a lot of the point. Yeah. It was to try to set you up with the and uh, the other thing we talked about. One of the other thing that was really important too is that you know a relationship is however many people you let in. And if you're going to involve other people in your relationship, which is really common with first relationships, um, because you don't want to be vulnerable and you don't want to expose yourself too much, uh, you know, you're in the uh, Miles Standish, uh, whatever that Plymouth uh, um, romance was where uh, John Alden and Miles Standish and, you know, one of them, you know, the guy employed a go-between to go to his uh, 
to his love. Seriously, they didn't teach you about this. And uh, you're looking at me like you have no idea what I'm talking about. No idea. This did not come up when I was 16. All right. Well, we're going to do a follow-up item today, and I, we will uh, get the information out about uh, Miles Standish was one of the leaders of the Plymouth Colony, and he, I thought, uh, John Smith, maybe, or John Alden, or anyway, he, he, John, he wanted to make an approach to, uh, uh, to a woman and employed an intermediary, and the woman's response was, what do you think to the intermediary who also was in love with her? And so that's how they, they ended up together. But when you're younger and you uh, don't wanna be too vulnerable, oftentimes you'll bring in other people or you're just unsure. And so you'll bring other people into your relationships and uh, it's a very immature way of dealing with it. But the more, you know, once you give somebody an, an entree into your relationship, they're in it. And they have a stake in it and they're going to participate in it and um that's also not ideal obviously you're going to want a relationship to be you know you want it just to be between the two you know that was another point i was trying to make uh, that was more about being 16 and not having had relationships uh, now that you have had relationships and hopefully a little more experienced you can understand the importance of honesty and communication so so what are the keys to a healthy relationship, Ed? When you've had good relationships and when your relationships have been done, have been working well. Sir, I've had one of those. You've had one of those. What does that look like? What, uh, you know, what, what, um, made that, uh, uh, what made that work? Funnily, the thing that I learned in that relationship especially is communication. Um, the importance of saying, I don't know, when he would ask and be like, are you upset about this? And I was like upset, but I didn't have a reason to be instead of doing the thing that you see in movies where they're like, oh, I don't want to feel this way about this. So I'll just tell them I, I don't feel angry is you can just say like, I don't know why I'm upset. I know that I'm having bad feelings though. And if you have a good respectful partner, they can sit and talk to you about it. Especially if you know that like, I have a lot of trauma from being cheated on. So when Jalen would hang out with female friends, sometimes I'd be like knee jerk, not happy about it, but that's not who I wanted to be. And it's not a healthy way to be. So I would tell him and we would actually talk about it, um, which helped a lot instead of me just pretending like I wasn't upset. So yeah, communication is probably the biggest one. Um, but other than that, that relationship recently ended. So. Well, that doesn't mean, I mean, relationships can run their course and doesn't mean it wasn't a healthy relationship. No, it was, it was a good relationship, but I, yeah, I have, I have one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's important and that's good. Um, but that's right. I mean, the, you know, I've looked at a lot of uh, things here around this, this research topic, and they're all pretty consistent again. Um, you know, the list that we put together came from the onelove.com, which is an interesting re uh, resource. I, I would recommend it too. But yeah, communication, communication, communications, the, the absolute bedrock of any kind of uh, relationship. You've got to communicate what you want, what you like, what you don't like, what you don't want, what's important to you, what makes you feel uncomfortable? Basically, you need to you need to to set, spend some time, um, you, know, feel, you know, thinking about what it is that you want and how you want to be, and 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 then communicate that. Um, you know, your partner can't be a committed partner, um, you know, if they don't understand what's the uh, you know what it is that you're what you're about. And so you got to let your partner know where you stand. Um, it's also important because this is a two way street. You know, everything we've talked about physical health, the, you know, the first few sessions, uh, first few episodes of season, you know, our relationship with ourselves. last time, we were just really in, in, involved with ourselves, right? My body, my, my own self, my internal self that I'm interacting with. Now we're actually involving other people, uh, other beings in our, in, in this relationship. And it, it becomes a two-way street. And so you've got to communicate to your partner exactly what it is that you're about. And you have to listen to your partner and encourage that communication back so that you can understand what they're all about. I have a, a funny anecdote about a not healthy relationship and when I knew this one was not destined for long-term. Um, it's this guy I saw for like a week before my most recent boyfriend. And um, I asked him if we should be exclusive because I was like, I like you and I probably wouldn't feel great if you were going on dates with other girls. And his response was, I just feel like we're too old to have this conversation. Hmm. And I was like, you know, 
no. <laughs> so, yeah, you're never too old to have a did. conversation about what you want and what you like. And yeah, I mean, yeah, basically he was shutting you down. He didn't want to, it was uncomfortable. He didn't want to have to yeah. disappoint you or, or whatever. He then unfortunately had the um, inverse of that happen to him the next relationship in which he didn't have that conversation and they did not understand where the boundaries were. So we've stayed friends, but it was like, oh, dude, now you've learned. This is well, why you talk to them. <laughs> you got to talk. You got to talk. And it's and yeah, it's, it's not just about talking. It's about paying attention to the nonverbal cues. You know, if I say something uh, to my partner, which causes her to stiffen up or, um, you know. Uh, or you date on Lopshire and all the cues are verbal. <laughs> Think, but no, actually, <laughs> they're not. Um, but but it is important to pay attention to those two, and then surface those, right? So make sure you understand. You know, okay, I said something that got uh, a reaction, a, a nonverbal reaction, but I don't. You know, I want to make sure I'm interpreting that nonverbal reaction well, right? So, hey, I, I saw when I said this that you, uh, you know, that you reacted in this way. You know, and I'm assuming it's because of this, or my read is this. Is that right? Is that fair? Um, and that's great. That actually reminds me of a surprisingly effective illustration. I'll call it that. That happened on The Bachelorette this year. <laughs> um, the guy who ended up winning, and this could have all been scripted. It probably was, in all honesty. But it was surprisingly accurate for a healthy relationship from The Bachelorette. Um, and it was like the last date they were going on, and they're like, activity was to do a choreographed wedding dance with these two dance instructors um and she started like freaking out because she was like oh my god it's real i might actually marry someone i just don't know um and during so she was like really shut down the whole activity and he kept like goofing off and asking him like are you okay and she'd be like i'm fine but then all of his confessionals were like i could just tell something was up so i kept like making jokes to keep her laughing and keep her light and he actually ended up winning and i was like surprisingly good job on the bachelor for that one <laughs> so i'm a little concerned that we're looking at reality television that is edited uh, as, as one of our good uh, like i said examples. illustration it was probably entirely scripted Perhaps. but like there's no way the bachelorette is going to make it all the way to the end of the show and then start having cold feet about marriage when that's the whole thing you know i feel like that's not a so I was like, this is probably scripted, but again, surprisingly effective at delivering. I, it was a good example, but I would also say that one of the things uh, that you said too about he ended up winning. Um, yes. There's no winning in relationships, right? You're yeah. a team. Uh, there's no. There's no winning, and so uh, you know that we'll talk about that next, really, which is the next real, you know, after communication, what you know, respect is 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 the, is maybe the next foundational piece of a of a healthy relationship, and. And what that means is you're not trying to win. Um, you're not trying to change your partner. Um, you're trying to accept that, you know, they're going to have different perspectives and opinions and preferences and experiences. And you need to honor that. You, 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 you know, you're, you're not, and, and, and they need to honor that. And you too, that again, you know, these, these are both, you know, everything we're talking about here are two-way streets. You've got to demonstrate it and it needs to be uh, demonstrated back to you in a healthy relationship. Um, you know, this is not, um, oh, you know, he's a slob, I'm going to fix that. Or it's not, boy, she's super uptight, I'm going to get her to, um, you know, get her and let her hair down. I mean, no, no, you're, you're taking somebody who's a person who's entitled to their own uh, beliefs and their own values and their own behaviors and their own choices, and you need to honor and respect that. Um, and if you can't, if you don't respect those choices, then that's not, that's probably not a relationship you, you that's should be in akin to why my most recent recent relationship actually ended is because what I realized I wanted a long-term partnership to look like and what he wanted out of a long-term partnership were different things and I didn't want to change his mind because I was like well I'm not going to change mine it's not fair for me to expect him to like grow up and change his because that's not that's not what he wants right so and that's yeah. That was one of those things where it was like, okay, yeah, I guess this just isn't the one that's going to work then. Right. It's not a lot. You're not aligned. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, you know, that that's not going to be end up being a very healthy situation. If, you know, you, there's compromise in a relationship, but then there's capitulation and, yes. and, and understanding the difference between the two compromise is something you can live with going forward. You know, it's kind of like maybe not what I would choose ideally, 
but it allows me to stay in my relationship and we can move forward together and 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 uh and that's important and i'm willing to i'm willing to sacrifice this 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 thing and, and move forward uh capitulation is um where you where you where you where you say what you said earlier which is um yeah i'm you know i'll 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 stuff my feelings or I'm, I'll change my behavior in a way that I don't want to uh, completely because I want, you know, I'm, you know, in the name of this relationship and all that's going to do is build resentment, which is going to undercut the relationship. And, and, and that's gonna be also, good. like, if you are in a relationship with someone, they can probably tell, too, you're not fooling anyone when you say you're fine and you're not. <laughs> uh, probably not. But, you know, if you've got a partner who's not paying a lot of attention to you and that's an issue and you're stuffing that feeling. Yeah. And, you know, then, You've got some other issues too, then, other than the stuff and feelings. That's the case, but that's true. That's true. But if this is the one thing that uh, you know is is not right in in a relationship, you're right. It's probably you're probably not fooling anybody. So you know, compromise, but not relation. You respect your partner and demand that respect for you too. You know, you've got your friends. You're going to have some friend time that needs to be respected. You you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk about boundaries next. Kind of that third piece. You know, everybody's got boundaries. Um, you know, physical, emotional. Um, boundaries um and you know you, you need to communicate what your boundaries are um kind of a uh, very early on in our relationship with your my relationship with your mother she used the bathroom while i was in the shower which wasn't super comfortable with and so i had to tell her hey, the bathroom for me is very private <laughs> and uh, it's been that way now for 34 years we've uh, kind of honored that you know simple simple example but you know, I was, that made me uncomfortable and I was kind of like, you know, I'm not really cool with this. And she was like, fine, that's not a big deal for me. So, um, you know, but, but, but communicate yours and respect theirs. Um, you don't need to know everything that each other does or thinks, and you don't have a right to know all that either. Um, right. Um, oh, yeah. Those boundaries are important um, and you need, again, communicate about them, right. Tell them to make sure that they're understood and, and, and you both know what they are um, and then respect them. So, you know, there's communication, respect, boundaries, they all kind of build on each other. Um, and what you're looking for in a relationship is unguarded trust. Um, we've talked before, trust, you can't have a relationship without trust. You, you know, the, the level of trust, and, and, the, and the deeper the relationship, the more intimate the relationship, the, the deeper the trust needs to be. So if you're going for, you know, a committed relationship with a, with a partner, um, you know, you want to feel that, that, and, and, and this is a this is an emotional thing. This is akin to faith in uh, religion, right? You, you believe it, not because uh, you know it's, it, it's not that it can be proved, but but you, you've got to believe that that um, your partner is going to respect you, that your partner is being honest with you. Um, you know that your partner uh, is, is, it, it wants the best for you. And, and is going to act in a way that's consistent with those things. So, you know, one of the things that we often do is, you know, boy, and you said it earlier, you know, I was cheated on, right? I mean, that's, that, that is not an uncommon experience. But don't bring that into the relationship. Don't penalize your current partner for something that a previous partner has done. And That doesn't so, mean, like, don't talk about it with them. Because that was know. really the thing for me getting through it with Jalen was being like, I'm having these feelings. I know they are not true. I know that you are not doing this. I just need to talk to you about your feelings about this friend, probably a little more than I would want to. Um, and he would be like, no, this is my friend who I've known this long and she loves your loves you and loves our relationship. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, no, Last. communication, absolutely. If it's on your mind and it's bothering you or if it's on your mind and you're excited about it, I mean, you need to share that. And, and you know, communication like, is just really another way of saying sharing. I also made the mistakes of earlier on in the relationship when things would happen like that, like when he was on cruises and stuff and would hang out with girls and be like, I'm they flirting with you. And it's like, that's not, that's not fair. That's not what he's trying to do. And I know well, that's, that. Yeah, it's not respecting him and it's not, uh, you know, the boundaries there, right? He's allowed to have friends and he's allowed to have so friends. We, who we, we figured out that the communication was me accepting the responsibility for those feelings that like they're coming from me and me only, not mm -hmm. you, but I just want to talk about them and we and that's can work through it. And again, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's something that you're experiencing and you should talk about that but the um you know but but he shouldn't have to change his behavior for that now that means he he needs to communicate with you and he needs to make clear that you can trust him you know that he is behaving in a way that's um and you know there'll be times when your partner 
is not worthy of your trust, right? I mean, that happens, right? And so, oh well, yeah, that's that's how that first one like happened. That, right when you get hurt like that um, in that relationship, and you have to make an assessment. You know, can we fix this? Can we move forward on this? Um, what's it going to take for us to move forward on this? And um, you know, and, and if the answer is, boy, that's that's I don't know that we can get there, or that's an awful lot of work for an uncertain outcome, and I'm not there, then it's time to end the relationship. But but that unguarded trust and, and unguarded is, is important here too. It can't be conditional trust. It can't be, well, I'm, I'm holding back. If you want a fully committed relationship, you've got to be vulnerable and that's going to expose you to, unfortunately, it's going to expose you to hurt. Um, the, op- the chance of hurt doesn't mean it's going to happen, but, um, you know, the, but, but the best description of the quote that I read uh, that really kind of resonated for me about trust is, you know, how do you, how do you build trust? And it's, steadfast affection, support, respect, and communication. So we've already talked about respect, communication, uh, affection. So you're, you're demonstrating that you do care about, uh, about each other, um, you know, by actions. It's not just words, but also by your actions. And we'll talk about this in a few minutes. What's that? You got the love languages. Know your partner's love language. The love language. Is that right? I don't know about that. That's uh, I mean, mom would probably appreciate if you did. <laughs> she probably would. Uh, yeah. And then finally, the last piece of this is actually what we just talked about is in, in that quote, support, right? You, you really want, you truly want what's best for your partner. So encourage those goals and, and growth. Uh, be protective, but not possessive, right? I mean, you know, you want to make sure that you're the safe harbor. For your partner emotionally when some when a bad day happens and somebody at work says something mean or the boss you know gives some some feedback that doesn't feel that doesn't land right and doesn't feel well uh very good you know you're there um you know support the friendships and family relationships support a person uh you know that your partner wants to be and uh, uh and and be there for that for that person so you know um uh, these are all things that are really important and, and really hallmarks of a healthy relationship if you're communicating you respect each other, you've established boundaries and honor those, uh, you trust each other, um, and, and you're supportive of each other's goals and dreams and, and, and actions. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to approve because it's not you, right? I mean, this is your partner doing stuff. So you know, I think a lot of times we get mixed up when your partner does something that you're like, well, that probably wouldn't be, you know, your mother might be uh, driving somewhere. <laughs> And, uh, you know, engaging in some behaviors on the road that I wouldn't myself do, but I have to recognize, you know, that's you know, this is not me driving, that's just her driving, and she needs to be allowed to express herself in some profane way. And <laughs> that's that I need to accept that and, um, you know, and, and be supportive of that, you know, that, yeah, that, you know, that, that person over there may not have meant to cut you off in traffic, uh, but... Um, but they did, and you had an emotional reaction to that. And you know what? That's you're right. You should, you know, that's that's a valid thing to have. Um, so I need to work on that. Um, I do it sometimes, but not uh, all the time. But those are those are ways to sort of demonstrate your support. So, um, so let's start about start. You know, when you start a relationship. You know, that's just, you know, you, I mean, all of these, these things we just talked about, these keys are really, it doesn't really matter what relationship you have. Um, you know, if you've got a partner, um, you know, you want to demonstrate those, those things, but what, you know, how do you build a, how do you, how do you, when you start a relationship, how do you, how do you build it so that it is healthy? Um, what do you do? Do you do anything intentionally? I'm not going to answer for that one. That actually, I um, drunkenly downloaded a dating app on Christmas. Oh, did you? <laughs> I've since deleted it. I was like, I'm not ready for this. Uh, but I've, I've now this time enforced a boundary of one month of not meeting in person and just talking over apps and stuff because I tend to, this is going to sound really conceited, roll with me here, really good at first dates, really good at talking to people and creating a bond. And then it gets sucked into something way too fast and it's more than what I wanted. And then it's like, wait, crap. I'm not ready to be your girlfriend. I just got dumped three weeks ago. So, uh, yeah, that's not, that one's not my strong suit, but. Well, well then let's help you here. Uh, we can share. Yeah. And again, I don't have a lot of personal experience with relationships, so I don't have a deep well of personal uh, experience to draw on and advise, <laughs> but I can tell you what 
medical news today, um, which was a really good list, I think. It, this, I read this and I was like, yes, this all makes sense. I like this. Um, you know, and, and the first one, maybe I liked it because the first one is be intentional. Um, start with purpose. Uh, think about the kind of relationship you want, right? I mean, and this goes back to, you know, what we talked about at the top. You know, what kind of relationship do you want this to be? Um, platonic relationship, a casual relationship, something more committed. I mean, what, what does that look like? Um, you know, what do you want in a partner? What do you want? Um, you know, think about this before you get into a relationship with somebody and then start fitting the criteria to them. Um, you know, think about the important things. Now, obviously, you know, maybe hair color isn't where you really want to spend a lot of time, but, you know, what, what is the kind of person that you want? Is it an introvert or extrovert? Is it somebody who's willing to be spontaneous or somebody who's a lot more calculating? Um, you know, do you want somebody who's, um, you know, really focused and driven, or do you want somebody who's more laid back and willing to, you know, willing, willing to engage uh, and, 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 and think about things? Or, or, you know, do you want a doer or a thinker? Do you want, you know, so all of these, all of these things, you know, that, that, all these traits in a partner, what, what are really important to you? And, and, and what do you, what do you want to see? What, what is, you know, kind of what are those deal breakers? Um, so that you have, when you have a sense for that one, you can be a lot more efficient in screening your partners <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and two, it really increases the chances of you ending up with somebody who's going to fit, fit with you and with what you want longer term, as opposed to, like I say, trying, finding somebody, finding there's an attraction and then trying to, fit the criteria to, to fit that person so that you can go forward in a relationship. I was uh, really surprised and I don't have the stat with me right off the bat, but um, you know, there's, there, I think it was in this article talked about, there's a, there, there's, it's, it's a very high percentage of people who will continue with a relationship even if they think the person isn't right for them long-term. <laughs> Um, they kind of fall into it. They'll move in together, cohabitate, uh, you know, continue deep in the relationship, even though they have reservations about it. Um, and I think that, you know, the important thing is to resolve those reservations first. <laughs> it's, uh, so start with purpose. Think about the relationship you want and the person you want to have a relationship with. Um, and then expect your potential partner to be doing the same. So just as you're vetting your potential partners, you're being vetted, right? And again, this is, there's, there's more than one person involved here. This isn't just a one-way street. And, um, you know, this is where you get into some of the heartache, right? You find somebody you think is perfect for you, but you don't fit their criteria. And it's kind of like, oh, but she, you know, she or he would be so perfect for me. Yeah, but you're not perfect for them. Yeah. Right? yeah. And it's a two-way street. One of those ones, actually, the core values thing I talked about last week um, where you figure out your core values is you want to have at least one of your top three in common with someone um, and that was in my last relationship that really rang true is we had probably like five of our top eight um, definitely one of our top three was in common um, and that that made it really easy because it was like always what motivated us was similar and we wanted to do the same thing and there were other differences of course but like that that does help um and well, early cool. on especially if someone comes like it's hard to just like go on a first date and be like so what are the three most important things in your life so that's a lot to ask on the first date um, well, so it doesn't yeah but you don't have to do that on a first date right i mean you no, know, but it no also like on. if you watch like pay, pay attention to if they like show one of the like something that's directly contrary to what you believe in um, like for me, one of mine is empathy. So whenever I see someone on a dating app who says anything about conservative politics or supporting Trump, I'm like, mm, yeah. that's just never, we're never going to align on that. That's directly in contrast with what is really important to me. So, yeah, well, I think, you know, the, 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 the time element here is important because, you know, you don't need to rush this either. You can have, you know, five first dates with the same person. We were not really first dates, but you know, you you can go on five casual dates without making a lifelong commitment or even a, an exclusive commitment or any commitment at all. Just like, hey, this is fun. This is interesting. Let's explore this a little more, um, and you will get to know them. And um, you know, when uh, when we were starting or starting to look at uh, businesses for us to to go into when I retired um, from my corporate gig. Uh, I, I worked with a consultant and, and his whole thing was, well, you just keep asking questions until you either f come across an answer you don't like that, that kind of ends the, ends the interest or you run out of questions and you realize, oh, okay, well, 
we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, is this is this where I want to really commit my energies? And so it's similar in a relationship, I think, is, you know, you start with purpose. That doesn't mean you have to have it all answered within a week or two weeks or even two months, right? I mean, take your time. Don't overextend yourself, right? Just do with what you're comfortable with. And this is back to boundaries and, and, and respecting other people, but demanding respect for you too. You know, somebody's pushing you and trying to get you farther and deeper into a relationship than you're ready to go at the moment. You know, they're not demonstrating respect and they're not demonstrating boundaries. And you need to say, you know, this isn't working for me. If this is, this is how it's going to be, this, you know, this is an indication that you're, you know, you know the, the, that you're probably not a, a person for me to have a healthy relationship with because I want so many, you know, I want, I want things, but I, but I need to, uh, there, there's things I need to know before I'm willing to make those, those future, um, you know, commitments. Um, you know, the second thing is, is communicating around conflict. So this is a great, uh, you know, sort of segue. And, you know, there's, there's lots of potential conflicts in a romantic relationship, especially when you're starting out and you don't know much about the other person, right? You know, the unmet expectations, you know, all I, you know I thought we were going to, you know, our, my default is that we're going to go, we're going to, you know, be together, be available for each other, where maybe the other person's default is that, well, I'm, you know, free to do whatever. And when we connect, we do. But, um, you know, that, that is a really common one. Financial stress. You bug know. my house. <laughs> What's that? So did you bug my house? No, no. But that's that's a lot of it, right? I mean, you know, shared work, right? I'm, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're in a relationship, or we're starting a relationship, and why do I always have to call you? Why do I always have to text you first? You know, that's you, you know, you're, not, you, you know, that can be a source of jealousy. You know, we've talked about that before. Um, you know, when you when you when you get into the kids and everything, parenting choices and. How do you how do you parent? Are you a are you a hover? Or are you a just sort of you know plays I fail? Let them let them let them figure it out themselves kind of thing. I mean, there's lots of sources for potential conflict. So, guaranteed, if you're in a relationship, and the more intimate the relationship, the deeper the commitment, the more put the more conflict you're going to come across. Um, you know, you just you got to communicate about that. You got to you know if, if it's a big or recurring issue, you got to you know communicate your perspectives listen to the other person's perspective and negotiate a resolution, compromise, find a compromise. I, you know, I really believe that if you work hard enough, well, you can find a, find a way out of just about anything that'll satisfy uh, both of you, but then you can both got to commit to it and say, you know, you're not going to hold on to those resentments. Like, well, I really thought we should have done this. Well, you did think that we should have done this, but we decided together not to do that. And you got to own that decision together and you've got to move forward together. Um, you know, if it's a small issue or a one-time issue, kind of an annoyance thing, you know, have the discussion, communicate, but you don't need to come to a resolution there necessarily. I mean, if I fold my t-shirts one way and you want me to fold t-shirts the other way, you know, that might not be one where we really have to sit there and go, okay, we need to, you know, negotiate a resolution. Maybe what we do is just validate each other's position, recognize we both have valid reasons for doing the way we do it, communicate affection. This is, this is a silly thing. I still love you. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with how I feel about you and then forgive and let it go. It's kind of like, this is the way I'm going to fold my shirts. Even and, and if I'm folding my shirts, this is the way I'm going to do it. If you're folding the shirts, this is how they're going to do it. I remember talking with a friend of uh, your grandparents who got into a big fight about how they folded the bath towels and they finally realized this is the stupidest thing, stupidest argument maybe we've ever had. Um, you know, why is it important that the bath towels be folded a particular way? Um, when you do the, the laundry, you fold them the way you want to. And when I do the laundry, I'm going to fold them the way I want to. Could you say that they applied to um, loading the dishwasher? No, that's a whole different thing. Loading the dishwasher is <laughs> far more important. You can move things. When you put something in the dishwasher, it doesn't have to stay in there until the dishwasher runs. You can actually move stuff around in the dishwasher. Right? So. Okay. Anyway. Communication, okay. very critical, but communicate to solve conflict, especially. Don't let conflicts simmer. Don't let them fester. Address them. Recognize validity. You know, back to those principles of respect. Um, you know, respect the positions. Listen. Make sure you understand what your partner is, is saying. And then see, see how you can move forward. And again, if it's an annoyance thing, just recognize, hey, we love each other. This is silly. Um, or it's not silly, but it's, you know, it was an annoyance, but, but we're going to accept that we're going to maybe do things differently here. But when we have to be together on something, if it's a big issue or something that keeps coming up, we're going to need a solution for this that we both buy into and then, and then do that uh, in that way.
Um, really important to make time for couples activities when you're starting, you know, to have a healthy relationship. It's very easy to get uh, uh, to get sidetracked, especially if you're, I mean, you know, we're talking about young people mainly here, right? People in their 20s and 30s who are really at the start of their careers, uh, which is often a thing that that imposes on on relationships. And uh, it did when your mother and I started um, were dating and. Um, it was fairly early on. I, I had to call her a couple of nights. We had a project at work and she and I were scheduling, you know, we're going to go out and grab dinner, or do something. Um, and I had to call her and tell her, hey, I'm not going to be able to do dinner. I'm going to have to work late. Um, let me knock this thing out. She's like, fine, we'll do something tomorrow night. I'm like, great, let's do that. Well, you know, next day, boss had more revisions to the project. So I had to work late again, called her, hey, I'm not going to be able to make the time. Like, she's like, okay. And then like the next week, a different project came up and I had to call her and she said, you know, I don't have to win every time with work, but I need to win more than 50% of the time when there's a conflict with work. And, and I realized at that point, yeah, that's right. I mean, if this relationship is important to me and, and I'm committed to it and, um, you know, I tell her that she's the most important thing to me, then I need to make sure that my uh, choices in time and resources and attention and energies honor that. And, um, you know, so so making time for couples activities is super important. Uh, you know, you like each other, you like spending time with each other, and doing things together, you know, interacting increases the bonds and infection uh, bonds and affection and deepens uh, relationships. So making time for each other is is really important, and and recognizing I think um, that you know that your your time needs to be in line with your priorities. Um, and if and if your stated priorities and your time aren't lining up, then you're either not consciously, you're not, you're not being purposeful and intentional about how you're spending your time, or your stated priorities aren't really your priorities that you feel. And, um, you know, you need to address that. Um, just a question here, actually. Um, I think I know the answer to this one, but for our listeners, what is your favorite couple activity with mom? Uh, boy, well, we watch a lot of TV uh, now. We're doing a lot of, uh, now it might be a COVID thing, but uh, we do find our, uh, you know, we do find Netflix shows or HBO series or Prime shows. We've watched uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of TV. So we do that uh, together and the dog is right in the middle of all that. <laughs> That's, I, I think I got it from you because like my, one of the like deepest forms of intimacy, intimacy with me is if I wait to watch the next episode until that person is back with me again. And I'm yeah. like, I care about you. If we are watching a show together and I'm not moving ahead, that means you're important. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I think I got this from my family. <laughs> that might be. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, your mother would watch more TV than I do. I'm basically done after two, two hours of TV. I'm pretty much ready to uh, do something. Wow. A whole yeah. other hour. COVID has changed you. A little bit, a little bit here and there. Um, yeah, so we'll watch a couple episodes of The Wire, or The Boys, or whatever show we are watching. Uh, we just finished Deadwood, which is fun. But uh, anyway, yeah, so it's important to uh, to have that time together. It's also important, though, uh, and this is the next thing in a healthy relationship, is to have your own space and let your partner have their own space. Um, a good quote that I saw was kind of a, you know, a healthy relationship is like breathing. You know, you breathe in and you breathe out. So you breathe in, you spend time together. And then you breathe out and you go out and you have your experiences, you are out in the world, you're doing your stuff, and then you come back together again and you and you come back a little bit different and you share what you've learned and shared what you've done and um, and then you have that time together. So both of those things are really important and and, and finding the right balance for you, for each other is really important too. Um, you know, some people can get by with just a little bit of uh, intimate time and some people need a lot more um, and you need to come to an agreement of, of, of what that, you know, what that what that right balance is and, and, and accept that. And then finally, showing attention and appreciation. Um, and this is an area that I have always struggled with. Um, it's not usually a problem early in a relationship because you're really focused on, boy, I've met somebody and I'm really attracted and I'm excited and I'm thinking about that person all the time. And as the relationship deepens and you spend more time together and you get to know each other better, um, you know, you can it, 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 you can go into sort of a, a you know, put it on autopilot and, and, and have that go on. And so, um, it's it, but but it's really important not to forget that it's that you need to show. I mean, you may feel that appreciation, feel that affection, but if you're not showing it, oftentimes, um, you know, the other person might not be 
might be sensing, hey, what's what's going on? The art already is cooled, and 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 it's and it is important to me. You know, one of the things I used to do um, when your mom and I first lived together was make a cup of tea in the morning and bring it to her, and that was a way of showing her, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about what you need. So there's lots of opportunities every day to kind of do these small things, these these little notes or you know a text or. I saw something and thought of you and, uh, you know, bring that home with you and, and remember to tell the person, hey, I was out and I saw this and I thought of you and, um, you know, isn't that, isn't that cool? So, you know, take the time every, every day, um, show your partner in, in small ways um, that you care. And then, you know, when there's an important occasion, you know, scale up and do a big, big show. Also struggle for me, but the, uh, um, you know, but but those but those day in day out kind of things that just let your partner know, hey, I'm I'm here and I'm and I'm thinking about you, and and those, you know, and I love you. Those are those are things that uh, that that really do matter. So there we go. So let's talk about you know you've established this healthy relationship. How do you keep it going? Um, so there's a lot of places that, that uh, had a lot of information about this, including Tony Robbins, the uh, self-improvement guy, which was kind of interesting. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the way to, have, you know, the first start, maintain a healthy relationship is make sure you have a good relationship with yourself. Love yourself first. It's really hard for somebody uh, to be in a, in a good, healthy relationship if they don't have a good relationship with themselves. So listen to last week's episode. We can tell you how to do all that. Um, you got to raise your game yourself, right? I mean, if you want to be... You know, if you want your partner to behave in a way, um, you know, in a particular way that, that that honors the relationship, you need to do that too. Right? You need to behave in the way you want your partner to behave around the relationship. You want your partner to devote time to you, you've got to be able to devote time to your partner. You want your partner to be honest with you, you want to be honest with them. I mean, all of those, all of those healthy behaviors, again, two-way street. Demand them of your partner for sure, but demand them of yourself as well. Um, meet your partner's essential needs, right? understand what they are. You've got, I mean, to be able to meet them, you've got to understand them. I mean, this is a person that you love. You're going to want to know what makes them tick, what's important to them, what do they need, and what do they need from you in particular? Um, and then you want to be able to deliver on those. Uh, that's, that's true. Knowing the love language is helpful because um, that's how you can show your attention and appreciation in a way that's really accessible to them. Um, and that was one of the actual trials of my last relationship was that I was very strong in his, but mine was his weakest. So he would do all the other things. And I'd be like, I just want you to text me. I love you. He'd be like, but I sent you flowers at work. And I'm like, just say you love me. I'm fine with that. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Well, that's right. I don't understand. I don't know the love language bit that you're referring to. So, uh, but, well, there's but five. Um, <laughs> But I mean, it, you sound like you you know moms pretty well, because um, I could guess that hers is giving gifts and acts of service, probably the things that really matter to her, um, things that you receive love with. Um, and then there's also words of affirmation, physical touch and quality time. She's also very touchy. We and she know. wants quality time. And so she wants all of these things. <laughs> she does. Yes, but she, she especially likes gifts and then you're making her tea in the morning would be an act of service one um for me it's like I, there was one time where i spilled salad dressing on my bed and then it triggered a whole mental breakdown um and all my boyfriend at the time had to, to be like is just say that he would wash my comforter and i was like oh okay all right <laughs> do it for me all right good yeah. Well, meet those, yeah, so meet those needs, understand, invest the time, find out what those are, communication is key in all this too. And um, and then when you know what those needs are, make sure that you're conscious of them and, 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 are, and are working to help help meet those needs. Communicate, you know, every day, we, you know, we, we change every day, right? I mean, the breathe in, breathe out, we go out into the world, we have experiences, we grow and, um, you know, we learn new things, we see new things. So every day we change, we're different. So there's always something to talk about, always something to bring back to this relationship. Um, and, you know, over time, our, our needs and our wants and things as we have these life experiences and as we reflect on those experiences and, and, and have conversations and interactions with other people, you know, that, that shifts our, our goals and it shifts our, uh, our desires and our preferences and the things we want. And so, you know, I got to keep those communication avenues open, make sure that, that we really understand um, you know, where we are at all times, uh, develop trust, you know, trust gets you through, um, you know, times of stress and uncertainty when, when things are, are, you know, crazy, 
um, you want to be able to trust your partner. You want to be able to trust that your partner is going to behave in a way, you know, again, that steadfastness we talked about before, right? Steadfastness, support, encouragement, affection. Um, you know, I trust that my partner is going to be there and behave in these ways that are consistent, which gives me uh, a foundation. And, and so when, you know, we're in and when things are crazy and chaotic, um, I trust my partner to be there and to do the things and not to hurt me and not to create problems for me and not to leave me unsupported. Um, you know, that, that trust is really important. And again, you, you build that trust every day by showing that you are steadfast in your affection, your encouragement, your support. Honesty, super important. And honesty really requires courage. And this is kind of where I fall down and have fallen down in the past. It's, uh, you know, you, it, it takes courage to tell somebody an uncomfortable or a uh, uh, or, or give feedback that that they're not going to appreciate or they're not going to that, that that's not going to make them feel great. And you know, we we struggle. I, I think everybody struggles. Many 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 of us struggle with with honesty versus kindness. And we have to recognize that there is a you know that there is a there there's a uh, there, there you can be honest and kind. <laughs> and, well, and, I would even go a step further to say that honesty is kindness because when you're not being honest with someone for whatever reason you are doing them a disservice like yes you're nobody wins with dishonesty no one is doing easier eventually truth comes out or yeah. you end up in pain and frustrated because you weren't honest or they end up in pain and frustrated because you weren't honest so yeah yeah but, we'll talk the last yeah our next segment here will be on breaking up and how to do that well and honesty is critical in that situation as well but you're right honesty is uh again one of those foundational pieces in a relationship you, you know and, and and trust is you know you can't you can't have trust without honesty right so but it also honesty also requires courage and sometimes that means delivering a message that's not going to be it's going to hurt and uh you, you have to do that. It's part of a healthy relationship. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be supportive and encouraging, but you can still deliver the message in an honest way. Um, you know, you, know, you want to grow together, um, which means you want to move forward together. New new situation. We just said, you know, we all we, we go out in the world every day and every day we change just a little bit. Um, so grow together. Make sure that you're communicating, staying on the same page, working through issues as, as life happens. You're going to be faced with problems and problems are opportunities to uh, to re-examine what you're doing, re-examine your priorities and and and, um, and move forward. But make sure you're doing that as a team, that you're communicating and, and then things that do involve the both of you, make sure that you're talking about them and, and, and working forward. Appreciate your differences. We talked about that. Don't try to change people. You know, the differences, the, the person that you were attracted to uh, was different from you. So don't and, and was and, and, and uh, you know, don't try to make them to something that um, uh, that that you're uh, you know that they're not uh, and don't want to be. Stay intimate, uh, not just physically but emotionally. Um, you know, demonstrate that you think about your partner every day. Bring your bring your tea in the morning. You know, uh, rub his feet at night when he comes back. I, you know, whatever it is. What I have uh, somebody I know who uh, does naked time, which is really an interesting uh, concept. Uh, let's talk about naked time. Add yeah, it's forward, like real time. <laughs> well, you know, naked time is basically, and no, it could be. No, well, you don't have to. It's fine. No, no we are. I got to explain this because I think it's a brilliant idea. It's, uh, you know, basically you, you get naked with your partner and, um, and it's not about sex. Although, you know, if it turns into that super, but if it's not, <laughs> it doesn't have to be, but, uh, but what it is, is a time to be vulnerable, basically. And the way you're vulnerable, you give yourself the cue to be vulnerable is you get naked with each other. It can be in the shower, it can be in the hot tub, it can stop. be in the bed. Stop. stop right now. Sit around the dining room if you want. Whatever. I got it. I got it, Dad. I got it. But uh, naked time is is about not just physical nakedness, but can also you please stop saying naked time. <laughs> uh, anyway, the whole point is be vulnerable with each other, be open, be naked. No. <laughs> All right. So part of that is, you know, and, and you know, kind of if you're doing these things, then you, it helps you align your values and goals. So you're communicating when conflict emerges, you're discussing and negotiating the path forward together. And so, um, you know, those are, you know, keeping keeping your goals, your values, your, your, your core um, pieces together and aligned. 
and um, you know, I think what you've done recently with uh, with Jalen was you you kind of your your goals or your values were aligned, but your goals weren't. Your goals in a relationship and what you wanted weren't weren't aligned. So there's a lot of things in a really healthy relationship. You know, it, you've got to align on a lot of different things, and it takes time to find somebody that you're going to be able to do that with. Um, and when you do, even when you do get on that same page, then you got to stay on the same page as you move forward. So, and there's like an important asterisk here that healthy does not equal successful. Well, that's true. Yeah, no. And, I would and healthy. Argue that my last relationship was really healthy. Like we check all these boxes. We communicated. We had respect, mutual support. Like he was always in my corner. I was always in his. It was just like when it came down to it, and that was also part of like how I know it was healthy is because we were able to say like this is what I want. And yeah. he was like, well, this is what I want. And it was, we tried for a lot of years to try to make those cross paths or go in the same direction or find compromises. But when the compromise is like, someday I want to be married and maybe I never want to get married at all. It's like, yeah, there is no middle ground there. <laughs> well, right. Those are, yeah, you're not aligned. You And, and those can't be aligned. I mean, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, then, then that that's right. You can have a healthy relationship, but, and, and in fact, I'd say the, a healthy relationship it was a healthy relationship when you realized that hey, it's not working mm -hmm. you know okay then uh you know it, then then we need to end it so um and finally you know the last thing in this uh you know maintaining a healthy relationship is you know focus on solutions you uh you know Tony robbins says you know energy flows where focus focus flows and and energy follows or whatever it is but uh basically relationship part, though, and, energy flows. Right, well, is that what it is yes Okay. It's the tag in a disclosure song. <laughs> okay. So relationships require attending, focusing on conflicts and where you not align and where there's where there's conflict. If you if you make that the attention, like, oh, we're not in agreement, oh, we're not in alignment. Um, you know, that's gonna build resentment, it's gonna build anxiety, it's gonna build fears, and those are those negative emotions will undercut uh, a healthy relationship. Instead, focus on, okay. We, we, we recognize we've got a problem here. There's a conflict, there's some issue that's, that's created stress for us. How do we resolve this? Let's put it on the table. Let's talk about how you see it. Let's talk about how I see it. Let's talk about how we might be able to tackle this together and, and move forward. So, you know, again, collaborating, compromising, not capitulating, but, uh, you know, working together on solutions. And so by focusing your attention on the solutions rather than on the source of the problem, we'll end up, I think. Um, it's all about stop collaborate and listen yes <laughs> very nice where did you learn that uh vanilla ice oh all right <laughs> nice ice baby nice <laughs> all right so let's talk about what you uh, had to do recently here ending a relationship in a healthy way so psychology today a great uh, resource for a lot of this stuff um says the healthy way to end a relationship when the time is running scores is it end it when you know it can't go on so when you get to the point, when you get to the recognition that, yeah, this is this relationship really is not, um, you know, going to go forward. It, you know, we we've, we've got whatever, you know, at whatever stage you're at, um, you know, it's just kind of it, it's just not going to work for you going forward. Then you need to say, okay, uh, we need to do the you need to do it then. Waiting makes nothing better or easier. Uh, it just adds stress. So be respectful. Uh, ended in the healthy way, uh, in the same way that you had the relationship, end it and 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 move on. So don't wait. Break up in person. This is not a text. Um, I know that you got a text once uh, from your very first relationship that uh, ended over a text, which was terrible. Terrible. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you need to be physically present to honor and respect the relationship that you've had and the person. Who's I will here? say I was not physically present this most recent breakup on account of having COVID. Right. Well, you were diagnosed <laughs> but COVID positive, but uh, we did. We met up once I was out of my quarantine and talked about why and everything. And okay. now we're good. But like there was, there was an in-person meeting and I felt like that was fair. Well, and you did it voice to voice. You talked and, and a lot of, I mean, you physically present is important, but, but it, but you can be physically present on the phone. Maybe. I mean, at least you're there real time and you can have the conversation um, and be honest about your feelings. Uh, you need to own them and you need to com communicate them honestly, but kindly. Um, you know, this is how I feel. And you don't need to apologize for them. You need to own those feelings, but you don't have to be mean and, and uh, you don't have to deflect. You also need to be clear and certain, right? Um, you know, vagueness, 
just creates misunderstanding, which can create confusion, which can create anxiety. Um, you need to be very clear uh, that, that this is the end. Uh, if you've made the decision, you know, dragging it out or, or you know, sort of soft pedaling it, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Uh, you need to own the decision, it's your choice. It's not somebody else's fault. It's not your partner's fault. It's not circumstances being what they are. This is your choosing to do this. You need to own that. Um, and then you need to listen. When you, when you tell the news, it's probably gonna be upsetting. And you need to listen to your partner's thoughts and feelings. You need to answer any questions they have, honestly and kindly. You need to stay open, so not defensive. I mean, you know, they, you've got to recognize, okay, this is going to be hard for them or potentially hard for them. They're going to come back on you. You don't need to own everything they say, but you need to listen to what they say, right? You need to, because that's, that's their, their reaction and they're, they're entitled to it. You need to respect that. So listen to what they're saying, try to understand it and, and acknowledge, you know, what they're feeling. Um, make the break, break a clean break. <laughs> There's none of this, uh, uh, you know, none of this, oh, yeah, well, let's, yeah, maybe we can go out bowling on Saturday as friends kind of deal, you know, no, this is a clean break, right? You don't, after your breakup, you don't want to be communicating, you want to, you know, you want to give them time and space, respect their, their, their privacy, but you also want to send the message that your relationship is different. So you don't want to keep communicating in the same way that you had been communicating uh, before. Uh, you want to break up in a private space so that they can have an honest emotional reaction without feeling self-conscious and and, and, and and upset. And it's best if you can leave at the conclusion. So don't do it in your own house where they would need to leave. Um, you know, do it at their house or some other place that's private where you can say at the end, okay, you know, this is over. You know, I'm sorry that I've hurt you. I'm moving on. And, and then you can get up and leave. So uh, you want that. And then a lot of don'ts. So don't offer false hope. <laughs> You know, well, maybe things will work out in another year or two, or maybe, you know, maybe once I get through my doctoral dissertation, we can get back together, or maybe when uh, I get back from my vacation, whatever. No, not false hope. This gets back to being certain and clear. This is, this is over. Um, don't try to make the other person feel better. That, you know, that's not on you. They're entitled to their emotional reaction, you, you know, and this is where I always went wrong is I was, didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But you're going to hurt them. And understand that it's going to hurt, um, but understand that, like you said, it's kinder to get it out of the way uh, than you know, not. Having a question to someone who moves along when the other person is done, um, you know, and when they don't tell you, it's honestly just kind of worse than if they were like, yeah, you know, I'm not happy in this anymore. Instead, of they just drag it out. It's like, you, yeah. you know, you're not like, I've talked to a lot of friends who have gone through breakups also, and they're a lot a lot of women um, especially are like but I just like I don't have a reason to you know and it's like you don't need one yeah, like yeah. you if you're done to, you're reason. done and that person knows like the person you're dating who you feel like you need a reason to break up with knows that you're looking for one so just tell them like just do it yeah well and, and wanting wanting to be out of a relationship is a perfectly valid reason to break up I just it's honestly, it's probably that. the best one that you could have, because then it's like, if you have a reason like, oh, you know, it's 2020, what the person can come back with, well, in 2021, can we try again? Which is like, well, no. And then it just comes back to, no, I don't want to be with you in the end. Right. Well, and that's, again, be clear, be honest, but be certain and, um, and end it and, and make sure it's clean. Yeah. Yeah, don't stay friends. I mean, that can happen later, but not in that conversation, right? In that conversation, our romance is over, we're done. Uh, this is why. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. And, 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 and that sounds abrupt and cold and it doesn't have to be quite that abrupt and cold, but it, but, but it needs to be along those lines. And uh, you know, certainly for God's sake, don't have breakup sex. I didn't even know this was a thing. But apparently, breakup sex is a thing, and it's like I thought it was a movie thing. I oh, talk about sending mixed messages. Very bad idea. So you know, don't muddy the waters. Don't create uncertainty because that just leads to confusion and anxiety and hurt feelings and and lots of negative things. You need to own your decisions, and your decisions are valid, and you just need to communicate them as all. And but do that with kindness. It's not the other person's fault. It's nothing, it's you're choosing not to continue with the relationship, which is a totally valid thing for whatever reason it is, but make sure that you're honest and that you do share uh, that, that thing without trying to protect 
the other person because really in the end you're not going to protect them but you know they're 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 likely going to be hurt and that's unavoidable but that's not that's not a reason not to to go forward so easily said than done <laughs> indeed all right so that's kind of our uh, take on healthy relationships be honest communicate be supportive and encouraging want the best for your other for your partner don't try to change him or her just yeah or them, or them. i guess i was using them consciously throughout this uh, instead of him or her, right right to the end here so very good so that's it we did have a follow-up item but i forgot what it was uh, oh, no. it was your thing about the the mediator yes the the standish miles standish yes, yes. all right we will get we will, I will get back to you next week with the story of Miles Standish and Priscilla. Boy, I don't remember. Anyway, that's our follow-up item. We have no Venmo tally today. No more bad words. Yes. I don't think we had bad words. I we haven't had them in a while. We have not had any today. Unless can I count naked time as you no. Venmoing? Because no, you I would not. like to be paid for that. No. No. <laughs> That's naked time. Still one of the best ideas I've had when it comes to, you know, helping people kind of stay intimate, um, not just physically, but nope. emotionally intimate. We've covered, we covered it. Yep. By being naked. I feel like we, we got that one. By being naked. So very good. All right. So what's our topic for next week? Doesn't involve nakedness. No, God. I really hope not anyway. <laughs> Unless like that's consensual. Uh, but it's how to have a healthy relationship with your community. And if that community is a nudist colony in a remote part of Canada, you know, go for it, but keep All it right. there. Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find us on awkwardfamily.conversations.com on Twitter at awkwardfamilyc1. I'm back in the Twitter sphere, folks. So I'm following us now, ready to retweet our audio intern content who did not make an appearance today. She did not make an appearance today. She's been very weird. It's like a little chilly in my house today. And she, um, Normally, if I make my bed, she doesn't crawl all the way under the covers. And then today I walked into my bedroom and I ended up FaceTiming Callie because it was so funny because my bed was fully made, but there was just like a lump right in the middle of it where Claire had gone from the top of my bed, gone under all my decorative pillows, and then just set herself up in the middle of the bed. Interesting. Yep. Well, hopefully she'll be back uh, next week. Then. She is. I'm, I'm about to go annoy her. So. Excellent. Uh, and you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts, wherever you like to listen at Awkward Family Conversations. And you can let us know what you think. Keep your questions and suggestions coming through comments, DMs, text messages, and now Twitter DMs, apparently, to my personal one. <laughs> All right. That'll work. Very All good. Right. Excellent. Thank you. And I love you, Ed. See you I next week. You, All right. Bye.